Well, it's, I feel thrilled really because it's, it's a wonderful thing. You know, I never th dreamed that would ever happen. You know, coming fr growing up in, in uh, Chardin in Birmingham, yes. playing my plastic guitar and then my brown plywood guitar. You know, I never knew that it would lead to all that, you know. Well, it's not only here, though, is it? You're also getting a star in Hollywood as well. Well, you've been given that, but you're going to attend the ceremony for that as well at some point this year. I am. It, the, the ceremony is sometime in the summer, and uh, they actually put that one in the ground uh, as for the ceremony. Then you, everybody stands around and, on bleachers and stuff and, and watches and shouts and hoots and hollers. But this is... So this will be a much more... Uh, not like one I've ever seen before. Today will be great, because I've, I've never seen the Birmingham version, which will be super. What's it like coming back after all these years? Because you still haven't lost your accent, have you? You're still no. a Brummie. Oh, well, I'm still a Brummie. But, uh, you know, it's, you don't really lose your accent ever, I don't think. I, I don't know anybody who, who ever... I've no reason to lose it, because in California they think I'm posh. <laughs> Do they really? <laughs> yeah. They think, oh, that's a nice accent. Where would you come from? And I tell them, and they, you know, they still don't know how people talk in Birmingham, so they think it's posh. It's a great thing, I think, having a Birmingham accent in California. OK, let's talk about ELO, because I've got here, and I'm going to quote this to you, because you might be surprised. After the success of ELO between 1972 and 1986, you wrote and produced 26 top 40 hits in the United Kingdom and 20 top 40 hits in the United States. That's huge. That's amazing, yeah. I don't know where all the money is, but it's, it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you've also produced some of the huge names, haven't you? I mean, we're talking about Roy Orbison, Del Shannon, The Beatles. What was that like? Unbelievable. I mean, to produce The Beatles was just like, never, ever dreamed that would ever happen. And uh, it's because I knew George very well, because I'd worked with him on his album called Cloud Nine. I didn't know Paul that well at the time, but I do now. And, and Ringo I knew, for, I'd produced him already as well. And so when we got in the room, they hadn't been in the same room for like 20 years or so, the yes. three of them, actual three of them together at once. And so we, we sat and listened to these tales from, of like the Beatles, and all the things you ever wanted to know. So I was just thrilled to bits with that. I, mean, I can't imagine what it's like. It must be fantastic to be a fly on the wall, really, when you've it got really people is. of that stature. Well, I was in their club, yourself. see. There was just them three and me, and that was it. So there's going to be quite a big ceremony tonight, isn't there? Have you any idea what's planned? Have you been told what to expect? Not really. I've got, I've got a question and answer with, uh, with Jasper Carrot, uh, right. who, so where he gets to take the mickey, I suppose. That's the idea, I think. <laughs> well, Jeff, we wish you all the best. Thank and you. congratulations again on getting the star. And, Thank you very much. Uh, have fun in California, too, when you get the one uh, in Hollywood. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you very much.